Hi, it's Emily, a contributing blogger at SecondarySolutionsBlog.com, and today I want to do a quick tutorial for how to use infographics in the classroom. And an infographic is basically just a visual representation of complex information in the most clear and concise way possible. Your students may not know what an infographic is when you first say the word, but once they see them, they'll realize that they have them everywhere around their social media, around um, their regular media and their internet and everywhere else. Um, and so it's a, an important visual rhetoric skill that also um, uses skills like summarizing and synthesizing information. It's basically a modern twist on the project board or the poster board projects that we've been doing forever. Um, I'm going to use PictoChart, which is one of the options for making infographics online. For me, it's definitely been the easiest, most intuitive, most powerful option out there. So if you want to see a sample assignment that I use with my classes, visit us at secondarysolutionsblog.com backslash infographics. My favorite infographic site to use for teaching um, students how to make infographics and also making them myself is PictoChart.com. And so if you go to the website, you can see uh, what it's going to look like. If you go to tour, you can look at some of the great product features of PictoChart. I really do think it's one of the more powerful and intuitive infographic sites. Um, and so they show you their intuitive interface. You can go through an experience, their interactive charts and tabs, their bigger and better selection of graphics, and I'll show you those in just a second. Uh, your outport and exports are now search engine friendly, which is good if you're looking for um, something that is search engine friendly. For pricing, you want to make sure if you're a teacher to go to the education pricing. And for educators, you can get the free forever package, which has seven pretty um, themes and access to all the charts and they are watermarked with a picto chart brand at the bottom, which is fine for classroom use. Or you could pay only $39 a year for educators. That's a special reduced price. You just have to use your teacher um, email address when you sign up. And they send you a special invoice for teachers and or administrators, anyone in education. And so uh, that's the plan that I have. There are also student bulk subscriptions that are nice. If you want to assign your students to create an infographic, um, they can all save them to the same account and then you can see them. I usually have my students just sign up for a free account and use the limited seven themes and then save them as a PDF or as a JPEG and then email them to me. Um, just because I want to save my school a little bit of money. The nice thing about the education, though, is, um, or the educators link right here, is those students then have access to over 100 professional themes, and so you can get a lot more variety. Students like it. Um, some of my students choose to sign up for the um, pro edition whenever they're creating their infographics just because they want to make that beautiful product or because they're going to use it in other areas of their life. So that is how you sign up. I'm going to log in. When you log in, you can use your social media or your uh, email and password. Since I am logged in as myself here, we can see that I could filter, choose by a category, a diff, an infographic theme, or I could um, just kind of scroll through them and look at them and decide. The ones that have pro in the corner, those are only if you bought the $39 per year educator or the pro edition at the regular price if you're not an educator. The ones that don't have that, those are the free themes that the students would be able to use. So I can just scroll through here and see uh, maybe what kind of project I'm doing and how it relates, um, how it would look on the different schemes. I'll just scroll through a few of these so you can see what they look like. Instead of showing you all 111, I'll just show you those ones. 
give you that uh, kind of brief overview and then we'll just start with one. I'm going to show you how I made the Flipping the Classroom infographics for SecondarySolutionsBlog.com and I picked this theme cardboard. I just thought it looked education related. It had um, notebook paper and that kind of thing. Um, so I'm going to pick that theme. Once I have set up my theme or clicked on my theme, I can see where pictures and icons and words are in their idea, but I can change all of it or leave it all the same. It's really up to me. Let's look at some of the major controls here. So the first thing is you can always click to view the tutorial. You can click on file to save it or to restore a previous saved version. You can export it as a PNG or a JPEG, and you can or, um, export it in different si sizes. You can preview it at any time to see what it looks like. You've got the undo button, which is really important, and the redo button if you want to do something again. Um, you can zoom in or zoom out, depending on how you want to look at it. You can share it on the social networks. And then down here we have our pictures and different tools that we've got going on. So the first one is icons. And the icons have a lot of different categories. Um, for me, I like to use the education one a lot, the general, some people might like the shapes or the science or depends on what you're um, looking at. And then images are a little more realistic looking, but they're still just uh, icons, but they're, they're colorful, they're multicolored. And then uploads, you could upload your own images and then insert them here. For text, this changes the different fonts. So um, if I click on H4 and I put it right here, um, it's going to be that black font that you see in other places in the infographic. The different fonts are the different um, options that you have in your original uh, infographic. Then the tools, you can create charts just the same way that you would in Excel and then insert them. You can create tabs and then you can also insert videos. For the background, you could change the background color if you want to whatever color you like. Um, and then for the moods, this is like the color scheme. So if you really like the way an infographic is laid out but you're not really crazy about the color scheme, you can change it change the whole thing quickly by going through the different modes um, and see if you like maybe one of those color schemes better. I'm going to go to the default. Okay. And then you can also change the how opaque something is or how um, how much you can see through it. Here we've got our standard uh, lock or unlock, group or ungroup things, copy, cut, paste, delete something, um, and you can always use the short keys also like control C, control V, control um, X, etc. Um, you can reset things, you can bring something forward or put something behind, so this this right here, this check mark, is in front. If I wanted it behind the paper, I don't know why I would want that, but if I did, I could click to bring it to the back, bring to the bottom, and now it's still there, it's just under the paper. If I brought it back to the front, um, I would have to click on it again and then bring it back to the front. Um, and then, so I'll show you how to use a couple of these. So I'm going to start by naming it. If I just click on the words, um, I can delete them. I'm going to call this Flipping the Classroom. And you can see right away that my words are much too large for my area. And so if I click on the box, on the side of the box, get that little arrow, I can make it... Um, 
make it longer. I can get that corner and make it smaller just until it fits where I want it to fit. There we go. And then here, maybe I don't, oops, sorry. Maybe I don't even want this box right here, so I just click on it and delete it, but I want this one to say, a critical look at a new trend in education. And that's going to be my byline there by Emily Guthrie, and I'll probably add secondary solutions blog.com somewhere. And that's how I just edited that first section really quickly. This next section I could also edit really easily um, just by clicking on things, adding words, adding, stretching things, moving things. Um, I'll show you how you stretch and move and delete um, in this section here. So I want to talk about. Uh, cons of flipping the classroom. So again, you can see it doesn't really fit, and so I want to get that side arrow, and then the, the blue behind it should really be as long as the title, so I make that blue a little longer just by dragging it larger. And I really only have three cons of the flipping the classroom that I want to talk about, and so I'm going to delete a couple of these, and I'm just clicking on the box and then pushing delete. And so I've done that, but now they're all lopsided, so now I just want to click and drag them so that they're evenly spaced. And then I don't, this icon doesn't really make sense for the points that I'm trying to make. So one of the points I'm going to try to make is that um, it increases the teacher's work day um, because we'll be answering questions through virtual forums all night and we'll have to have some boundaries about that. Teacher work day. And so I might want to find an icon or an image or upload something that makes sense for that. And I will look at education. And I think that since they'll be ha asking virtual questions, and I'll probably write something about that, I'll put the hand in there like they're asking a question. It's too big for my circle now, so I got to shrink it down by grabbing that corner. And then I can change it to any color I want. Um, you can just make it blue or anything you want. And then you could also do the same thing for these other parts of it. With as far as uh, the list goes, you can just click on it, and then if if you want to write more than just three words, you could just make the box bigger by catching the side and making it bigger. So that way, you are going to be able to write more in that little area. And you basically do the same thing throughout, just clicking things, deleting them, moving them, so that they're making sense for your particular product. I have mine saved over here. So it's going to prompt me to stay on the page or leave the page because whatever I've done won't be saved, but I'm not needing to save that just sample one there. So I will click on flipping the classroom. I'm not sure why I made two. I think I just accidentally saved it twice. So this is my final product after it loads. And you can see that I kept a lot of the same look of the template. I just changed, um, I added my own words obviously, and I changed some of the spacing um, on this particular paper right here. I needed two lines of highlighter because I needed to write more than what was there. Um, there are my three circles that I was telling you about. And there's my more writing I just did by um, stretching my text box. Some of my personalized icons that I used because they made sense for what I was talking about. Um, at any point you could also edit the layout 
by moving a block to the bottom or the top. So if you click on it, this first part right here is the block. I like it at the top, but you could move it down if you wanted things in different orders. Uh, the other thing you could do is add a block or delete a block if you really needed to use another section that had a similar layout as another block, you can just add a block. And that is how you make a basic infographic. I love using this as an assessment tool for students um, to put out their ideas and to organize them in logical, flowing, and beautiful ways. It's kind of like the new way to do the project board or the poster board kind of uh, assignment. So if you have any questions or you'd like to join in the conversation about making infographics for classroom use, visit us at secondarysolutionsblog.com. Thanks. Have a great day.